Hey guys, welcome back to the Friday Vlog where we discuss activity that goes on here with the Buzz Weaver channel, current events, headlines that are in the news, technology, social media, and just items of interest that come up during the week that are worth mentioning to uh, create a little bit of a dialogue for you guys out there in the audience. I want to thank all of you guys for your continued participation here on the channel. If you are new here, welcome. I'd like to encourage you guys to click on that watermark down there in the bottom right hand corner to subscribe and then that notification bell so you guys will know when the next vlog is out as well as other content that's here on the channel on wednesday october the 24th at 11 a.m pacific daylight time the just survive servers from daybreak were brought down we might say that this is kind of a temporary sunset because if you guys have been following the channel and the just survive news you know that uh the team there at H1Z1 with Chase and Adam Clegg will continue Just Survive. For all the details and information regarding that, you can check out the link up here in the top right-hand corner. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see how long the servers may be down. It has been a very interesting three-year ride covering the game, and it's been a lot of fun bringing it to all the fans of the game and to the community. So I'm looking forward to seeing what the guys and the team is going to do. And of course, you can continue to see that Just Survive coverage here on the channel. On Monday, October the 22nd, Toronto had its meritorial race, which involved Faith Goldie, fellow YouTuber, activist, and journalist who made her bid despite the deck being stacked against her. I was very excited and enthusiastic for her. She had a lot of hurdles and obstacles to deal with there in Canada. And I have to say that um, she had rather conservative views, about as conservative as an American would have, or very similar to the conservative views that maybe someone like myself would have. Of course, it is different. Uh, conservatism, liberalism, independent, and all that sort of uh, political positioning is a little different in different parts of the world. But some of the things that she had to face were really quite extraordinary. She was turned down by one of the largest advertisers there in Toronto who said that um, essentially that her money was not uh, good enough or was not valid for the payments that she made for her advertising, which was quite bizarre. And of course she took that to court. And unfortunately, while they're in court, the judge decided to not proceed with the uh, suit where she was filing against the advertising company. All quite bizarre, but not uh, unusual, I suppose, in collectivist type uh, government mindsets. Uh, it's one of the things I guess that kind of allows me to have that sense of value and appreciation for the United States because things of that nature really aren't going to happen here, at least not to that extent. I mean, uh, there's people that we disagree with, but we don't necessarily ostracize, alienate, and shut people down. Now, I'm not talking about like individuals like Alex Jones, where it was the tech giants that kind of uh, took him off the platform because he's still out there in uh, alternate media, as it were, you know, Gab, Real Video, Minds, and things like that. So he had options. But with Goldie, she did not have very many, if any, options or courses to follow, no type of recourse to be able to get representation and uh, have her case heard. But nonetheless, for all the obstacles and difficulties and challenges that she had to face, she came in third in a, in a meritorial race there in Toronto. It's amazing. Out of the list of, I don't know, was it 18 or 20 or so? I'll give you a link down there in the public section below so that you can uh, see uh, the information pertaining to Faith Goldie along with uh, her court case there with the um, advertising companies. But nonetheless, I wanted to bring that up because I thought it was uh, quite an interesting story and I have been following Faith Goldie for quite some time. Speaking of journalists and activists, we heard out of the UK this week concerning Tommy Robinson. If you guys uh, do not recall, back in May, Tommy was arrested outside of a court as he was doing a live stream on a child grooming gang case. He was sentenced to 13 months, but only served uh, from May until August, where he was able to appear uh, in court, to which they then reassigned him a new court date which was this week, October, the 22nd week, 23rd. I can't remember whether it was on the 22nd or the 23rd that he appeared there um, at the Old Bailey, the kind of the central court for the English and the Welsh there. They hear some of the, you know, the highest cases or the most, uh, the most notorious cases there. But nonetheless, uh, 
He was not um, sentenced to jail again, which was very nice. He was released. However, he will have to appear again uh, in court for or to the attorney general there. Now, the legal system in the UK is a little different here in the United States. So apparently they can continue these uh, court cases on and on and on indefinitely. Here in the United States, that's very uh, similar to what's called a continuance. But at least here in the United States, you know, we have access um, <clears throat> to our attorneys and the ability to have different, we have different representation here in the United States. I won't go into all those particular details, but suffice it to say here that Tommy Robinson at least is not going to be rejailed, which I'm very happy about. Um, he will again have to face the attorney general, or will go to the attorney general where he'll be able to at least plead his case as best as I can understand. So I'm looking forward uh, to seeing how that all turns out. I hope, I hope that this will eventually get resolved. But nonetheless, guys, I'll leave you uh, the information down there in the public section below. As of this week, we also got confirmation from the Saudi government that, in fact, Jamal Khashoggi, Khashoggi, I've heard it pronounced both ways, nonetheless was actually killed in the Saudi consulate there in Turkey. And it's really kind of uh, disturbing what we're also learning, too. You guys may have heard that it was up to 15 different people that were conducting the interview or t interrogation or enhanced interrogation, whatever it uh, particularly was. They said that uh, his cause of death was, or they are suggesting that he had uh, suffered from some sort of strangulation or some type of uh, restriction that uh, then you know caused his death. Of course, there is no body at this time. There is plenty of speculation that he was actually dismembered, which is disturbing enough, but we also learned even more troubling type of news and that was apparently a body double was used. Um, the, this body double, I guess, was part of the 15 that was there. This individual dressed in his, in Khashoggi's clothing and then exited the embassy and then was seen at different uh, locations uh, throughout Turkey there, I guess, to give the appearance that he was alive and well. Really kind of a very weird and unusual story. One that uh, would be up there with, say, like uh, the conspiracy theory type channels or, or coverage of journalism. But nonetheless, um, very strange and unusual. And of course, all the guy was trying to do there was uh, try to get um, his paperwork done for his divorce with his uh, previous wife and uh, ended up dying as a result. But of course, there's a lot of controversy surrounding Jamal Khashoggi. And that is, of course, that uh, he has spoken out against uh, the House of Saad there. And of course, uh, has been suggested or speculated that he had connections uh, or information concerning Osama bin, Osama bin Laden and 9-11. But nonetheless, uh, you can see the continuing story of Jamal Khashoggi down there in the published section below. I'll leave a link for that. But nonetheless, I just want to give you guys a little bit of an update on that. One of the biggest news stories this week here in the United States is the caravan of people that have moved from Central America and now have reached, as of this recording, into the southern parts of Mexico where they are meeting levels of resistance. Now, when we first heard about these groups of individuals, they were referred to as a caravan. They have been referred to as an invasion. But nonetheless, it is hard pressed to say that these individuals are grassroots. This is a group of individuals that started out, uh, as we heard, at 4,000, then they were at 7,000, and now the estimates are 10,000. So this is hardly a grassroots movement of individuals who would typically be trying to make their way into the United States. This appears to be deliberately organized. It is uh, contrived of individuals that probably have spokespersons within this group to be able to manage their way through these various countries. Moving that many people is not a simple task. It is very logistical in nature and requires organization and requires leadership. So it's very curious to see how this is all starting to unfold, particularly during the midterms here in the United States, because immigration is a huge issue. Now, as we have seen in recent weeks, we started it off with the Kavanaugh hearing. Then we had Elizabeth Warren do her uh, DNA testing. And then, of course, we've heard other types of activity that have been going on to include that George Soros may be leading or funding this group that is heading there, along with the U.N. and maybe even Democrats. Now, I'd be hard pressed to say that the Democrats were involved as far as any type of funding. But nonetheless, on top of that, uh, 
to to go back to George Soros, he was sent a bomb apparently in his mail. And as of this recording right now, this morning, I don't have any additional news on this right now. Of course, by the time you guys watch this, there will be. But apparently, uh, both former President Barack Obama and the Clintons were sent some type of package. That's all the information that I had uh, as of this recording. But nonetheless, as I told you guys, you're going to be hearing a lot of very unusual news in the next couple of weeks leading up to November the 6th. Now, I did go and vote early voting on Monday of this week. Didn't have any particular problems. Um, there were some additional paperwork filings that I did do. Uh, not unusually uncommon, but of course, my ID was checked and I did fill out the paperwork. And of course, did the regular voting on the machines that have been questioned and uh, kind of disputed and so forth for quite some time. But nonetheless, they are connected via LAN, which is a local area network. But in regards to these individuals that are making their way, of course, um, you know, despite the fact that, uh, you know, the Americans are very empathetic towards these individuals. It isn't though um, we are insensitive to these individuals or that the president is insensitive to these individuals, but we do have a process. I mean, bringing in that many people at one time is a logistical and paper nightmare because these people have to have to have a place to stay. They have to have food. They have to have drink. They have to have uh, sanitation. They have to have all these things that human beings have to have. And as you can see, you know, one thing you never hear about about when you when you uh, hear the stories out of the United States when it, when it comes to these particular immigrants is that these individuals have to deal with coyotes sometimes they're paying these these people six to seven to ten thousand dollars to be able to make their way from South America Central America and through Mexico so again this isn't just some grassroots event okay these individuals have to face coyotes they have to face cartels they have to face corrupt um, authorities, uh, corrupt officials. It takes, it's a process to go from country to country to country. Now, I have been to Central America. And I have been to some of the countries that are mentioned in, or, or that have been mentioned that these individuals are traveling from and through, like Honduras, Guatemala. Uh, I don't know how many, uh, I don't know who the groups of people are. It appears that uh, a majority of them may be from Honduras, some of them are from Guatemala. I don't know if, if some of them are going to be from Ecuador. I don't even know how many would even be from Panama. But nonetheless, uh, they're traveling through these particular countries. Well, actually, if they're in Honduras, they wouldn't go through Panama. But nonetheless, um, you know, they are right now in the southern part of Mexico where they have faced levels of resistance. So it's going to be interesting to see how the president is going to continue to respond to this because immigration is a huge issue here in the States. And um, of course, this could all play into um, the midterms. Now, I have my own opinions and I have my own thoughts based upon the midterms. What I'm hearing from other individuals that are covering um, the news cycle, those who are covering the midterms and stuff. And I think that things are going to be a lot different than people would have anticipated, as well as um, the president has held off. This is kind of a side note. The president has held off on um, the announcement that Mueller is going to make. But what is interesting is from Politico uh, yesterday or the day before, um, they talked, they were trying to start playing down the fact that once this Mueller case is released, it's going to end up being somewhat of what they call a nothing burger. Uh, there was no Russian collusion, of course. So, yeah, people are going to say, well, Cohen and Manafort. Uh, but it doesn't affect the president. <clears throat> you know, the whole goal here is to, by some, is to um, impeach a sitting president. And I think they're going to be very disappointed. And I have a feeling there is a potential that there is going to be levels of disappointment in the midterms for those individuals who are Trump detractors. I won't go into all the details on this particular subject because we're talking about the caravan that is moving through Central America and how that's going to impact things. But I don't know whether or not those individuals are going to be able to reach the American border. Trump has said that he would even send military down there to prevent these individuals from coming in. So there's a lot of positioning and political wrangling going on right now. We'll have to keep an eye on it. But nonetheless, that is one of the biggest issues that, that has been presented here in the news cycle this week. All right, guys, so that's going to wrap it up for this Friday vlog. Thank you guys so much for your continued support here of the channel. And if you haven't already, as you have reached the end of this video, click on that channel icon appearing right there on the screen to subscribe to the channel. And then click that notification bell if you guys want to be notified of the most recent uploads to the channel, whether it's the vlogs or other content. And I also have the community tab active and available too if you guys are clicking the bell, then you will get those uh, little community tabs. It's kind of like Twitter, Facebook kind of notifications there from the channel. And I will see you guys next week.